happy Fourth of July weekend. And I hope that uh, everyone is able to enjoy it and celebrate it. Now we will join you in the call to worship at Friendly in the Bulletin. We gather on this holiday weekend morning to serve God. How, How can, can we, we do that? that? Listen to God's words. Yeah. There are so many distractions all around. Let us concentrate on God's rules. Now, we will be in the opening hymn, God of Grace, number 366, in the of the First three verses. Right here.
What weekend is this? Independence Day. Fourth of July. What does that mean? country broke away from England, said we're going to be a new country. But more than that, it also means that we think of God, we think of God as part of our freedom. It's under God that we get our freedom, we have our freedom. And so we know we should know where we're looking for that freedom. <coughs> and listening for God's word. God speaks to us in different ways, different things that happen. God has a control, not all the time, but not a lot of the time. A lot of the time. Sometimes we don't give God a chance to control it. We want to do it our way. We want to have it our way. But when we think of God and we think of asking God for guidance, then we're not doing it our way. We're doing it God's way. And that's where we need to look all the time. It's to us God and ask for guidance. Okay? Thank you. Maybe you can... Okay. All right. Where did the make it to? Testament lesson today is Galatians chapter 6 verses 1 through 16. Yes, Paul's letter to the Galatians, starting with chapter 6. My brothers and sisters, if anyone is detected to be in a transgression, you have received the Spirit, should restore that one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burden, and in this way you will fulfill the laws of Christ. For if those who are nothing think they are something, they are deceiving themselves. And all must test their own words, and their work rather than that of the neighbor's work. They become a cause for pride. All of us carry their own loads. Those who are talking to you, very much share all of the things of their future. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. You may reap what you sow. If you sow in your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow in the spirit, you will reap eternal life from the spirit. So let us not grow weary doing what is right, but we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, whenever we have the opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those who have a family of faith. See what large letters I made for I am writing in my own hand. If those who want to make a good show in the flesh, we will be good. We'll try to compel you to be circumcised. 
That is only a taking out the person for the cross of Christ. Even in the second, in the circumstances, they do not themselves obey the law, but they want you to be circumstanced so they may boast about your flesh. May I never boast about anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. But neither circumcision or non-circumcision is anything. But new, new creation is anything. It's for those, <coughs> it's for those who will follow the Lord. Peace upon them and mercy. And upon the Israel of God. gospel lesson this morning from Luke chapter 10 verses 1 to 11 and 16 to 20. After this the Lord okay, after, after this the Lord appointed 72 others to send them on ahead of him in pairs in every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Go on your way. I am sending you out like lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, carry no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if a person of peace is there, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, Eat what they say, set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into the streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me. And whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name even the demons submitted to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. Indeed, I have given you authority to trend, tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the Spirit submits to you, but rejoice that your name are written in heaven. Here ends the morning scriptures. <coughs> Following Christ. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be fully acceptable to you, O Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Jesus was planning to go off throughout the area, the various towns, but he wanted to prepare the way. And so he gathered 72 more followers and he sent them out. When he sent them out, the only thing that they had was his blessing. 
didn't carry anything with them. That seems like a strange way to go. Because you can see people going off on a journey and they've got suitcases that are twice as big as they are and still don't have enough. These people that were sent out, were sent out to do the work for Jesus, to prepare the way. And they followed what Jesus said. They went off onto the villages to see if they would be accepted. And if they were, then they knew Jesus would be accepted too. Because when they weren't, they said, well, the kingdom of heaven was near, but you didn't want it, and you don't want it. That's the way we have to be, too. We have to be prepared to get the kingdom of heaven for ourselves and for others. We have to be ready to do that for Christ's sake. Because that's what we want to do. That's what we're wanted to do. Jesus picks us to do his work until the second coming. And some places, some people don't believe in the second coming. And yet others believe that it's coming close. But you know what? It doesn't matter if you believe because that's what counts. You have to convince others to believe as well. You can't just say it's coming. Goodbye. You've got to convince them. You've got to be with them. You've got to reap the harvest of those who are willing to go along with Christ. And in so doing, become part of that heavenly host. There are times when we're not accepted by people. And they turn us down, they turn off. They turn off on Jesus as well. Have you ever been rejected? But anything? Sure. We all have. <clears throat> but what do we do about it? Well, the 72 that Jesus sent out didn't seem like they got rejected very much. They came back happy that they were able to be accepted. They were being able to convince people in the towns that they were, they were right. And that Jesus was coming through. The kingdom of heaven was near. Paul was one of those people, not necessarily the 72 that Jesus sent out. But Paul went out to do the same work and to convince people that the kingdom of God was near and that they would, in fact, be blessed by what happens as far as Paul was concerned. Paul wrote to the different places, Galatians and the Ephesians and so forth, telling them, in case of Paul with the Galatians, he was talking about the law. The people that were that he was talking to had been talked to by Jewish people. And in this case, he was talking about circumcision. That that they were telling him that that was absolutely necessary. That was one of the rules, one of the laws of God. And as Paul wrote. 
even those who are circumcised don't follow the rules. So it doesn't really matter, yes or no, whether you're circumcised. It matters whether you follow the rules of God, whether you follow what Jesus has taught, taught people, what he taught me, and what I'm teaching you. Those are the things that matter. And matter a lot, because then, and only then, are you actually following the will of God? And so Jesus said, look, you've got to pay attention to what they're doing and what they're saying. And they're actually two-faced. Because they're telling you you have to do one thing, and they're doing the opposite themselves. And so therefore, pay attention, discern what's right and what's wrong. have a chance and you talk to somebody and you convince them or you reignite Jesus in them. I had an experience because I had I had office hours on Wednesday night, which was something that I don't know of any church that ever did. But I had office hours Wednesday night for the simple reason I wanted to give people who worked and I might have a chance, want a chance to come in and speak to me to be able to come in and speak to me. And so several people did. One in particular, a man who happened to be from Connecticut, but he trans transported himself to Maine and he was looking for a church, he was looking for a reigniting of his own beliefs and so forth. And he came in, I don't know, several times, and talked. And then all of a sudden he disappeared. I didn't know where he went, didn't have any word from him at all. And then I was at a Methodist uh, con conference or workshop, I guess it was, and one of the ministers came up to me and said, thanks for sending me Dan. I said, what? It seems that he found a lady friend, moved down to another part of the area, and she was involved in the church, and he, she got him involved in the church down there, and he became very active with part of the choir, and this, that, and the other thing. And the minister was very glad to have him, but obviously he must have given me, given me some credit for why he continued on. And I felt, oh boy, I guess I did the right thing. And to see you know, just to see one person do that, uh, to me, made a big difference. And he made a big, he made a big difference for that church, and that church made a big difference for him. He found the way. Because he listened to those that were going about teaching what Jesus wanted to taught. And that is how we get one more. That's how we get somebody to stay with us. That's how we get someone to tell somebody else about it and bring them in. There's so many different ways that telling the, rule, the rules of God through Jesus that you can reach out to others and sometimes you reach out and you don't know that you've done it. But somehow it comes back to you that you've done it. And that's what really makes a big difference in people's lives.
not necessarily your church that they go to. They go to a church, and that's what's, what's, what's that's more important. So when you're assigned a pathway, propose the way to Jesus. It may not be what you think, but what you have to do is what's right. Listen to your heart. Follow through the plot. For Jesus will lead you. These teachings are specific. You need to follow Jesus. You need to listen to what he said. What he taught the other people to do before he went to the town made a big difference. In his journey, made a big difference in the people who accepted him as well. Those are the things that need to be done, that need to be taken care of and are taken care of when we follow the rules of Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, we have the prayers that were read. We have the prayers that are in people's hearts they want to lift up to you in private. But you're fine. We know you listen. We know that, they have, that the time is that they have for themselves. We ask on this holiday weekend, Independence Day, the 4th of July, the birth of a nation, 264 years. We wonder how, how does this continue? We pray that through the guidance that you give the rulers, through the guidance that you give those who are on the street, through the guidance that is just there for us to pick up. That we can continue to go on as a nation. We pray for those that are in the service, wherever they may be, that they may be safe and will come home safe and secure. Pray for the young lady that is in prison or on trial in Russia. A supposed drug dealing. We know how situations are between the United States and Russia. And will that be a kangaroo court just to show that they can do something against the United States. I pray that she has a fear trial. And I pray that when they're the jury, whoever it happens to be, decides that she will be free and able to come home. I pray for those incarcerated that they may find you during that incarceration and have their lives changed completely. This is a kind of a weekend that we need to think about all our people and all be free. He has this in Jesus' name. Amen.
I am the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger. You who believe in me shall never thirst. Jesus invites us all who believe to come to this table and share in this holy meal. But none feel excluded by any rule of human creation, for it is Jesus who invites us, and he who is, on our, is our host. Come, not because you must, but because you may. Come to testify not that you are righteous, but that you are a seal and sincerely loving our Lord, Jesus Christ. Come not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Come not to express an opinion, but to seek his presence and pray for his spirit. In company with all who hunger for spiritual food, we come to this table to know the risen Christ, the breaking of the bread, the broken bread, and in this cup. We proclaim Christ's death to celebrate Christ's resurrection and to await Christ's coming for the second time. This week we remember the events of August 6th of 1945, the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. In the decades since, the world has lived with the threat of nuclear annihilation, and many have worked and struggled for the abolition of nuclear weapons. Oh God, like a father who teaches his child to walk, like a mother who feeds and heals her children. You desire to nourish all people and rescue them from injustice. You follow us into this work of just making in the air. Yet follow all the paths. We come to the choices and choices. Violence and destruction. Lead us here, teach us how to put aside all temptations that lead to violence from the smallest to the most cruel. The Apostle Paul called us to seek things that are above and find new life revealed in Christ. As we have been called by Christ, we put away the things that lead to death, and Christ's life is revealed in us. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Holy God, remembering how in Christ's sacrifice he destroyed our death and in his resurrection he restores our life. We offer you this bread and this cup. Let us, let your spirit come upon these gifts and make them holy so that they may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sanctify and dwell within them and within us, that what we do here and who we are may be pleasing in your sight. We ask it in the name of our crucified and risen Redeemer, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. These gifts of God are for the people. Come now, for everything is ready. On the night when Jesus was arrested, he sat at the table with friends. And after they had eaten, Jesus took the bread and broke it. He said, This is my body that is given for you. remembrance of me. He blessed the bread and the cup, and in his name we now prepare to give you the bread. Ministering in your name, we give you this bread 
And we ask that you hold it until all are served. And we will eat together, symbolizing our unity in Christ. same way when he after supper took the cup. This is the new covenant in my blood. Pour it out for many. Pour it out for you. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. Ministrating in his name, we give you the cup. Please drink of it when you receive it, symbolizing our diversity in Christ.
we thank you that you have brought us with this sacrament, united with us with Christ, and given us the four days of the heavenly banquet for your eternal realm. Send us out into the power of your Spirit to live and good work to your very praise and glory for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God's name, I say, go with you.